Go ahead, I'd, like to, I'd like to start off by um, congratulating Nashville uh, for a, a tremendous season. They were a very difficult opponent today. And um, and honestly, uh, they, they gave us all we could handle. Um, you know, I, I want to credit their, the coach, Gary Smith, has done an excellent job. Mike Jacobs, Bill on the roster, and then the players, um, you know, for fighting all season long. Um, what a year for them, expansion team, and, you know, a club that, you know, people didn't talk a ton about or expect too much from. And, you know, I think it would be remiss, you know, for me to not mention and credit, um, you know, their players, their coaches um, for a great season. As far as my group, couldn't be more proud. Um, we knew coming into this playoffs, it was four steps. We'd make two, we're halfway there. Um, you know, this was a, another difficult game. Um, it was a game where we had to, you know, win a lot of duels, um, defend set pieces, defend crosses, um, and try to break down, you know, a very organized block uh, of players. And uh, it wasn't easy. I thought we were very, Patient. Um, I thought the second half, uh, we dominated the game. Um, even though we didn't find the goal in the second half, I thought we uh, we wore them down. And you know, I think good teams in games like this, they eventually find a way. And I think our attacking players, their quality eventually, um, you know, allowed us to to break the deadlock. And I also would say that our defenders. Um, and that's not just the back four, although I thought our back four was excellent today. I thought our team defending and our ability to keep us in the game, um, you know, defend transition, and like I said, defend all these little moments that are big moments until we were eventually able to find that first goal. Um, and what a what a first goal. Lucas Ellerian, the pass, uh, Giassi the run and pass, and then finish from Pedro. And then the second goal from Luis Diaz. The Giassi, you know, our front four, you know, it wasn't the cleanest or the most perfect. You know, obviously we didn't have any training this week, so a little bit of that showed um, that chemistry. But you know, those players, they've got quality. If you give them enough time, they're eventually gonna they're gonna pick the lock and find a goal. And I thought we did that. Thank you, Caleb. For our first question, we'll go with Paul Tenori of the Athletic, followed by Jacob Myers of the Dispatch. Paul, go ahead. Thanks, Caleb. Um, um, I know a lot of focus will be on this this week, but I wonder if you could pull back even further than that. I was thinking back to when I when I saw you back in 2018, before you took this job, and you were talking about the process you like to go through in building a team. Um, now you're you're two wins away, like you said, from an MLS Cup. Um, how, what's this process been like for you in in building in Columbus and getting this team to this point? Uh, to be challenging for a title. Yeah, you know, I've coached 20 years. Um, you know, 13 of those were, were in college. Um, you know, as a head coach, it's been three clubs that I've been with, Akron, Portland, and now the crew. And, you know, I'm a guy that likes to pick projects um, that fit me and, you know, fit um, my family and, community we want to live in and it's always about going into uh, whether it's Akron or Portland or now Columbus it's going into these communities and doing something special and making making history and, and you know igniting the um, you know the community um, and, I, and I've always felt strongly that it's got to be the right fit for me and um, last year was a tough year um, a tough transition. It was a different type of transition for me. Um, but I think you saw mid-season on um, that we started to, you know, get the group on board with the way that we do things, the way that we we run our culture, the way that we play game model. And I think that's continued into this year and makes me proud, obviously, to be in a position here in year two where we can um, have a chance to put a trophy, the trophy case. Um, we're not there yet. You know, the group's really, really hungry. They're very, very businesslike. They weren't celebrating in that locker room, um, not one bit. Uh, 
uh, they, they can't wait to get back here on next Sunday against the Wheeling home to punch their ticket to MLS Cup. And that's not going to be an easy game. Got a lot of experience uh, in Bruce Arena and in their team, and uh, it's going to be a battle. But uh, I wouldn't bet against my group, and um, we really love being here, and you know, I love my, my team. And it's a simple thing, but I got I to gotta love the city I live in. I got to love the players that I have. Um, when that happens, um, you know, eventually good things happen. So hope, hoping it's this year. We'll see. But uh, uh, regardless, I'm really proud of the steps we've made this year. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Jacob Myers, followed by Pat Murphy. Hey, Lip, you always talk about how your big players have to play big um, in games like this. I, I guess just what did you learn from guys like Jossie and, and Lucas, who uh, had some struggles and just difficulty getting free tonight, but kept with it in the extra time? And then obviously with this whole week as the backdrop, uh, able to give those type of performance, what did you make of all that? Yeah, I knew, I knew it wouldn't be perfect today um, because, you know, we didn't even touch a ball for two days last week. Um, didn't even touch a ball. And the only prep day we had was the day before the game. And, um, you know, it's difficult to do much on that day. We knew tactically they'd be ready. There would be no surprises in what we have to do. But when you don't get reps, um, then it's not going to be as clean cohesive and sharp. And I think you saw that a little bit today, but I thought second half, you just saw the mentality. We saw our game. I mean, we had them completely pinned back. We had complete control of the game. Um, we were in the front half. We were on the ball. We were counter pressing. We lost it. Um, they had very little chances in that second half. And even though we couldn't find the goal, we stayed patient. Um, we didn't give anything away. And, you know, eventually, um, you know, we're going to find a way through. And I believe that. The players believe that. We have the quality to eventually, like I said, pick the lock. But I will say this is definitely one of the best defensive teams that I've ever faced. Uh, very organized, and they can absorb. They're comfortable doing it. They've got good players. Um, and it wasn't easy. It took a couple special plays out of, out of like you said, our special players. And, that's what you need to keep advancing in this tournament. Up next, I'll go to Pat Murphy, followed by Patrick Golden. Caleb, similar question, but specifically Giassi and Lucas. Um, you know, Lucas, obviously, a, a record signing. Giassi probably doesn't get as much credit as he deserves in this league. To have them combine uh, on that first goal and then Giassi to finish things off, this, this attacking, that attacking duo – just speak to what they've come, become this year, especially in a, a strange year, and, and Lucas obviously being new. Yeah, I think they've been big time. You know, in, in my game model, a nine ten, I keep. Um, you, know, need, you need a nine that's going to finish the play, and and also in the way that we press, you need someone that's going to cover ground and be that first line of pressure. That that's the most underrated thing that Giassi brings. I don't think there's a better pressing forward in the league. I, 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 I don't believe that there's a forward that runs harder and works harder and covers as much ground as he does. And, you know, he's a guy that um, finds good spots and finishes the play. Uh, Lucas, you know, um, he's our creator. You know, he's the guy that's, um, that's got to, uh, you know, find those spaces in front of the back four slip guys in, um, you know, he makes us go in that final third. And they got a lot of numbers around him. They were very physical on him. Um, and again, I think just with the lack of training, there was, there was some moments that we could have done better, but I never, ever, ever um, for one minute thought that we wouldn't get a goal. Um, you know, and I believe in the way we play. You know, I believe that this way is the best way to win games. Um, I think there's a lot of other ways you can play the game. This is the way I believe in. And um, I think we're executing it really well. But we couldn't do that without Lucas and Giassi. Um, there were times last year where we executed really well, but we couldn't find a goal. Um, 
And with those two, we're going to find a goal. And, you know, I think it's interesting, too, because people forget about Pedro. Um, but Pedro's a guy that, when you look at his numbers last two years, um, you know, he's a guy that more oftentimes than not pops up, especially if you're, if you're focused on Luke, Lucas too much. And I thought Luis Diaz it was his best game of the year. Thank you, Caleb. Well, so we're going to wrap up our media availability. We'll go with Patrick Golden, followed by Brett Hilpern, Jacob, and the final question will be Paul's. Patrick, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Caleb, you talked a little bit about the lack of ability to, to prepare and how tough uh, the national defense is and one of the toughest that you've ever faced. Was that a, a, a prepared plan uh, that you guys really kind of forced it out towards the wings, uh, Luis especially? Uh, was, was seemed to be tasked with getting behind the defense and sending in those those quick crosses. Was this a, a, a an idea to kind of unsettle that back line and, and then switch that point of attack uh, quickly, just vertically rather than, than side to side? Yeah, you know, obviously, um, when, when teams play, you know, with a low block um, and they have 10 players basically 30 yards from goal. Difficult to find space central. Um, we found a few good moments there through Lucas and through Darlington. Um, but that's tough to score in that way. You got a few shots from distance. Um, you know, you're usually gonna gonna have to versus that type of um, you know, compact block. You're gonna have to get around the edges and I thought Luis Diaz really brought that penetration that you need and he had a lot of really good moments and I think he was rewarded with that second goal, a great cross. Um, he worked really hard as well. People forget he's a young player and he's had, you know, a little bit of an up and down year in his second year. He's still learning. Um, he's still becoming a complete player. You know, in our system, it's very complex on both sides of the ball, what we ask our players to do. Um, there's a lot of details in it. And there have been some times where, you know, he's, he's been a bit paralyzed because there's so many things he's thinking about. And, um, you know, I think he's, even though he maybe hasn't produced as many goals this year, he's, he's really made a lot of progress in becoming a complete player. Um, I thought today he defended really well, which hasn't always been his strength, but he put a shift in there and he was dangerous all night. Every single time he got the ball, he was, he was a threat. And uh, that's what we need out of him. Thank you, Caleb. Next, we'll go to Brett. Caleb, in, in this season, which, you know, has featured a ton of games uh, in a short period of time without a ton of recovery, what does it say about the ability of your team to go 90-plus minutes as a core group and, and still maintain a high press, still be able to draw defenders out to midfield playing behind? Because it's not just fitness, right? It's, it's also kind of like a gumption thing. It's a drive thing, right? Yeah, I mean, we believe in dominant football, which means we're going to dictate the game and we want to be in the front half. We know, when, we know by pushing that style of play that you're going to have to break it down, uh, organized um, defenses with, that are in balance. Um, you know, but it's not just that. It's not just the front half. I mean, we can see um, we're very good in transition. We work on that and talk about that. We're a very good pressing team. You know, we feel like we're a multifaceted team that dictates the game, you know, and, and I think these guys are executing it really well. And um, they're fun to watch when they do that. And this next game is going to be another difficult one. There's some quality on New England uh, with Gill and, and Bo and Busca and, you know, the best, best coach, American coach um, ever. Uh, he's very experienced. I never had a chance to go against Bruce in the playoffs. So um, I don't know if I'm looking forward to it or not, um, you know, but uh, I know my, my team is. Thank you, Caleb. And final two questions will be Jacob Myers, followed by Paul Tenorio. Caleb, that team who, that came in tonight really hot offensively. Uh, defense, there were a couple things I think you alluded to you wanted cleaned up at the back. Were there any details obvious tonight or, or was it just kind of 
maybe some drive late that uh, led to your first shutout since September? Yeah, I think um, we, we we cleaned up some things. We talked about some things. We showed a lot of video. Um, that's a good thing. I mean, we we couldn't train, but we we were able to show quite a bit of video over the last several weeks. And sometimes that's the best preparation you can do is showing little pictures and moments. Um, you know, where we can be better. But uh, you know, I won't elaborate on on kind of some of the areas where we've struggled, um, but. Definitely, there have been a couple points of emphasis uh, that we wanted to tighten up over the last week. Um, I thought they, they showed that today. Thank you, Caleb. Our final question will be Paul Tenori. Caleb, obviously, there's huge difficulties in not being able to train. Um, but I wonder, from your perspective on preparation, how tough it was when you, you don't really know when the next test is going to come back, who's going to be positive. Um, not just in, in kind of the simple thing of putting together a, a team sheet, but I wonder just kind of also the, the emotional toll that that's taken when you're, when you're probably constantly looking at your phone, wondering what news is going to come next. Yeah, it was a um, very challenging week in a very challenging year. So what I would say, what, what I would say is um, never had a week like this in my life my coaching career um, but we have had some moments this year that were similar and so I think um, the mentality of the team um, I just can't say enough about this group how resilient they are how, how they're able to adapt how they're able to just keep um, focused and you know I've never been more proud of a group just being able to deal with the week we had, the year we've had, um, this is for me what coaching is about. It's being with a group of men that are committed um, to a cause and a goal. And, you know, they're not going to let anything stop them from it. And for me, that's why I coach. I coach for the players. I coach to help them achieve things that they want to achieve. And I've never been more proud of a group this week and this year. Um, they're very tight, close-knit. And, um, you know, they're, they're focused and they don't bitch. They don't make excuses. They don't complain. They're very professional and, um, they're great men. You know, they're great men. Um, you know, I've, I've been around a lot of good teams, but certainly this, this, this group stacks up with the, the best I've had, um, for sure in terms of mentality and professionalism and, and just good guys. You know, and it, it'd be easy to be easy to get frustrated. You know, it'd be easy to complain. It'd be easy to throw in the towel and just say, you know, screw this. You know, but but they're not going to do that, and they haven't done that all year. So uh, this was another week where we talked about um, just being resilient, sticking together. And I actually told them I thought we got stronger just this week from dealing with all the stuff we had to deal with. Thank you, Caleb. This is going to conclude.